Hey guys, my name's Kevin, and today I got my Invincible Shield in the mail. So, I'm gonna do unboxing, installation, and finally a review about the product. This is for the iPod Touch 2G, by the way. Alright, let's see. This thing took two weeks to ship. It's the slowest thing I've ever seen. What the hell? It's so hard to open, too. <laughs> okay, it's harder than it looks. And now, I don't want to open it any other way. Okay, so. Wait. Okay. So you get this really lame looking box. It says Invisible Shield by Zag. Has some bullshit reviews on the back saying, oh, best product ever. Alright, let's open it. So you just slide it out. They changed it. I bought one before and it did not look like this. It was just like some plastic thing. So basically you open it, you get where you call them, congratulations, you bought one, you get this huge bottle of solution. Not huge, it was bigger than what they gave before. Uh, squeegee, squeegee out all the bubbles. And the film are right here, as you can see. So, oh, they also include instructions for once. Actually, yeah. Okay, so that's just an unboxing. I'm going to install it too. So, yeah, I'm going to start installing it. Okay, so, I'm going to start it. You want to get your iPod? You want to get a lot of microfiber things, you know? These things are good. So I'm just going to remove my silicone case. Oh, so shiny. You want to protect that shininess. Alright, so, to clean it, you want to use a solution and just spray it on and just wipe it with the microfiber patch. That's how I think it's supposed to be done. Why can't they make this stuff easier to open? Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry about this. It's hard. Oh, I got it. Amazing. Okay. Here's the solution. So, let's start. The back. Oh, that, it's not working. Okay, it takes like a few puffs. So you're just gonna wanna wipe every piece of dust off the back. Use one side for the liquid and one side to buffer it to get all the extra stuff off. Okay, the back is pretty clean. It's been clean, it's always this way. See the front. It's not spotless. It must be perfection. Yeah, as you can see, I'm a total neat freak about this stuff. So, I guess we're going to do the front first since it's the most important part of the iPod that you use daily. Okay, let's see which one is for the front. I hate their packaging. It's so hard to open. Maybe I'm just weak. Okay. Wow, this thing smells really weird. But I guess stronger it smells, better it is. So this is the front. If I can get it out. Fuck. I just ripped up the thing. Okay. Slow and steady, cat. Slow and steady. Okay, this is the front. You can see this invisible shield. So you're just gonna wanna come on, peel this off. 
Oh wait, before I start, I'm going to spray my hand with this junk. Because apparently it helps with the... I know clearly why this helps, but I just read it somewhere. So yeah, this is water, soap water, I think. That's what they call it. So yeah, you want to get your hands with it. Get it dry. Then you want to peel this off. You want to spray it. I'm going to spray it. No, wait. Now you're going to want to position it so it fits perfectly on the iPod. Okay, I'm going to spray the iPod first. Okay. Here we go. Wow, it's so hard to move. Oh my god. I got the little the ring thing on there too. I'll put that on later. So, put it on. form to my iPod and this is what it looks like after 12 hours as you can see the back there's like one bubble there another bubble there the front it's no bubbles and if you notice there's like a wavy texture on the front but it actually helps your finger slide over it and also there's no fingerprints see if I go like this no fingerprints check it out it's nice and shiny but since I did it in 15 minutes, I only got two bubbles, I'm actually pretty proud of myself, you know. I, I remember getting this like a year ago for my first gen iPod, and it took me two hours to do it. And the sides won't go on, and like the flaps falling off, there are bubbles everywhere. Maybe that, or I don't know. Maybe I just sucked at putting on Invisible Shield back then. But yeah. So, let's get to the review of the Invisible Shield. If I was going to give this product a rating out of 10, I would probably give it an 8. First reason is because this is extremely expensive. This is like $25. I only bought it because I had like a 30% coupon, so I got it for like 19 or 20. Now, other than that, but wait, it comes with lifetime warranty. So if it ever gets damaged, you can just send it back to Zag and they will replace your invisible shield for free. But back to review. So it does what it's supposed to do. There's no scratches. It makes the screen look weird, sort of. You can't really notice, but your fingers slide over it. No fingerprints, no scratches, definitely. But installation is so hard. I'm not even joking. I spent 15 minutes, but a lot of people spend two hours. But it was really hard because once, if you have a bubble right after your installation, you probably will never be able to get it out because everything is like formed. It's not really invisible. You can still see it, and it's not. Like, it doesn't cover 100% of your iPod. It covers like 99.8, apparently. But yeah, as you can see, the corners are like weird. Right here, like, the really tippy edge of the chrome is like uncovered. So if you're really picky about that, then, well, sucks for you. So, I'm gonna give you some tips about installation because I've installed two of these and I've learned from my mistakes and I suggest you guys don't do the same thing. So, first tip, okay, make sure your iPod is clean. No dust, no nothing, okay? If there's a piece of dust on here, it's going to be there until the day you remove it. Other thing, don't spray the solution on the sides of the back. Like, when you place the flaps there, if there's a solution on it, it will not stick to the iPod. You have to wait until the solution dries so it can stick. Third part, or a sec, I forgot, I lost count. Get a silicone case. Because right after you install an invisible shield, you just want to put your iPod in the silicone case. Because a silicone case is just 
it's exactly like the form of an iPod, except it squeezes the iPod, so it will like force every single part of the invisible shield to stick to your iPod and mold. Okay, and right at the installation, if you see weird like dust things on the screen, that's because there is micro bubbles on the invisible shield. Those clear out after a day, but these big bubbles, they will be there for a while. I also heard rumors about the invisible shear turning yellow after like a year. Pretty sure that's true, but you can always just give it back. And the flat